I'm Kenya. I've been taught about energy and water conservation my whole life, but still have a ton of questions, especially where does the water I use every day at my house, my bathroom, my kitchen, at school come from? Is it free? And is California still in this drought? You know, the one we've been hearing about forever. Today I'm talking to kids about what they do and don't know about water, energy, and natural gas, and how these resources actually are a really big part of our lives. Do you know where your water comes from and where you live? I think it comes from, I don't know. You don't know? That's okay. Do you know where your water comes from at home, like for your showers and the sink and stuff? Uh, from... Do you think that water is free? No. No? Why not? Because there's only a limited amount of water on the planet. What about you? Um, no, I don't think it's free because, I mean, some people can't get water, so... That's true. Do you know what a wind farm is? Yeah, it's a wind and it's a farm. <laughs> do you know what climate change is? What do you think it is? Um, when the weather changes. Do you know what a wind farm is? Sort of. Do you know if water is free? Um, no. No? You don't think it's free? Well, when you go to like a restaurant, usually it's free, but usually when you buy from your, when you get it from your home, you get a water bill. True. Yes, my mom tells me about it all the time. Okay, so we have a lot to learn. It's time we go to the source on these topics, AKA the experts. My name is Jim Yanata, and I'm the manager of the Los Angeles Aqueduct. Give me an overview of how the water works and where it comes from in LA. There's four major sources of water. We've got local groundwater, an aqueduct in the Eastern Sierra uh, from the Owens Valley called the Los Angeles Aqueduct. Another aqueduct was constructed in the early 1930s to get water from the Colorado River. And we also get water from the State Water Project. Those are the major sources of water. It rained today, but kids my age are a little confused on if we're actually still in a drought, so are we? Well, technically we are. Even though this year, this winter, has been good from a snow and rain perspective for California and for Los Angeles, we go through usually one, maybe two years if we're lucky, of wet years, followed by several years of drought. Six years ago, we had a wet year, it was followed by the five worst consecutive years of drought in recorded history in the Eastern Sierra. So even though you may have one good year like we're having now, we still need to conserve water. We still need to be prepared for those several years of drought. And that's the way weather has been in California. This is our Los Angeles Reservoir here with uh, the 90 plus million shade balls. Wow that will allow us to serve water without having to put chemicals in there. And it keeps, keeps the water clean. It reduces the ability for algae to grow. Hi, I'm Kenya. Hi, I'm Jeremy Tell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Come on in, have a seat. Thank you. Just to be clear, what is climate change? Climate change is caused by greenhouse gases from uh, humans through um, fossil fuel burning for the most part. So when you have these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they tend to trap the heat in. So the energy enters in from space, hits the earth, warms the earth, and the earth then radiates energy back out towards the atmosphere. And these greenhouse gases absorb this outgoing radiation or energy and then re-emit it back towards the surface, causing a warming of the planet. How will climate change affect kids my age in the future? Greenhouse gases that we emit today or emitted yesterday or in the past, they, they stay up in the atmosphere for first quite some time, for decades. And so the effects of climate change are really cumulative and, and will um, continue into the future. And so the more we emit, the more that we add on to what's already in the atmosphere climate is becoming more and more variable, so we're seeing more drought years and more flood years. So more years that are very, very wet or very, very dry. Since this is a global problem, our decision makers and our, our politicians are really the ones that are making the ultimate decisions here. So we need to be supporting or voting for people who favor climate mitigation rather than business as usual practices. I'm here at LMU to speak with Melody Grubbs from the Bay Foundation. 
we're going to talk about water conservation and rain gardens. Why is it important to conserve water in LA? There's over 4 million people living in LA. When you think about all the water that everyone's using, not just in their homes, but um, for their businesses, it, it's a lot of water. And so conserving water is really important for this area um, so that everyone has water for the future. Water and power are limited resources. Um, and in the midst of climate change and sea level rise, um, there's a lot of unknowns. And so conserving is more important than ever. What is a rain garden? Well, there's a lot of ways to conserve water in Los Angeles. And one thing the Bay Foundation does is install rain gardens. Rain gardens provide a variety of benefits. One, capturing water. When it rains, water coming down and hitting the ground, instead of running off and collecting pollutants like grease, oil, trash off our concrete roads and sidewalks, water that comes down in the rain garden is able to filter out a lot of these pollutants. And so it not only improves water quality, but it also creates a, a little mini ecosystem because it has California native plants. Did you know 95% of Southern Californians use natural gas to heat their homes? There's a lot more to how energy works in Los Angeles. We're gonna speak with Nancy Sutley, an expert in energy, to learn more. What is LADWP? LADWP is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, and we provide electricity and water to the four million residents of the city of Los Angeles. Is energy free and unlimited? Sometimes it is. The sun is free, the wind is free. What isn't free is converting the energy that's in the sun or in the wind to energy that we can use in our homes or our businesses in our schools. What is natural gas? LADWP uses natural gas to produce electricity. It's methane, it's a gas called methane, and it burns cleaner than oil or coal. It's a fossil fuel, uh, so it's really the remains of dinosaurs and all the organic uh, material that's deposited underground. One thing that we've been doing is trying to make those power plants that use natural gas more efficient. That is, produce more energy burning the same amount or less natural gas because that's better for the environment, it saves us money, and it saves you money. What's the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy? If you think about something like oil or gasoline, uh, if you use it once, it's done, it's gone. You've, you've used it up. But if you use wind or the sun to produce energy, you're not using it up because tomorrow there'll be more sun and tomorrow there'll be more wind. So those are called renewable resources. So a lot of kids ask me, what is a wind farm? So could you clear that up for us? So if you go north or east of Los Angeles, you may see wind towers producing wind energy, so energy from the wind. They kind of look like stalks of wheat, and so they've taken on the name of wind farm because they kind of look like a farm, like you're growing the wind turbines uh, across our landscape. I'm Stephanie Pincel, welcome. Thank Very nice you. to meet you. Please come in. I teach at the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability at UCLA and I'm uh, what you would call a social scientist. So I look at how people make decisions and their behavior and their institutions. What are the most common forms of energy we use day to day in Los Angeles? Electricity. Your phones, for your computers, your lights. 40% of greenhouse gas emissions in cities comes from electricity and natural gas use. So a lot of electricity gets used. Can you tell us what it means to be sustainable? Oh, that's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> um, really what it means in, in the basic way is not to use more resources 
than the planet is able to produce, right? So to try to maintain a level use of the resource so that we don't run out. Why is it important that students my age can serve and what can we do at home? It's important because it's a habit that we need to learn about being a responsible member of society. There's only so much to go around and we each have a responsibility to make sure that we don't exceed our fair share. Kids your age can do lots of different things. You can put in a power strip. When you're done, you just push the off switch and all of your appliances will turn off. You can encourage your parents to change their light bulbs. What does the future hold for Los Angeles? I think it's a really bright future, actually. I think it's really, really, really exciting because LADWP is working in a direction that is reducing water use by reusing the existing water in a really, really smart way. Actually, we're okay on the waterfront, I think, if we do these things well and don't lose interest simply because we've had a good rainy year. For more tips, information, and ways to conserve, visit LADWP and the Bay Foundation online.